Hello everyone, welcome to Meet Non-Toxic. Uh, today our topic of discussion is polyps. Okay, from a gynecologic perspective. So what is a polyp? A polyp is most often or very often, I would say, a benign tumor that is, that is attached to a surface by a pedicle or a stalk okay so simply polyps are tumors attached by a pedicle so if you can look at the picture here right it shows uh, uterine polyps okay now the one on the top is a pedunculated polyp and the one by the side is a sessile polyp where the pedicle is short or not there right now talking about the types of polyp as i say there is most often or very often benign but that doesn't mean you don't find malignant polyp so it can uh, be either benign or malignant right so the benign polyps the types of benign polyps are the mucus polyp mucus polyp uh, means that it's arising from the mucus surface of either the uterus or the cervix cervix it could be fibroid polyp so fibroid polyp are polyps uh, arising from fibroids so that we wouldn't discuss here that is a discussion that uh, we will have when we are discussing fibroids or leomyomas placental polyps are polyps arising from the placenta or you could have malignant polyps right that could be actually benign polyp right but what happened is they undergo secondary changes right that could be one <coughs> or it could you also could have polyps that are uh, malignant polyps that arise de novo right just by itself okay now what do you think are the risk factors uh, to a woman that they develop polyps okay so most of it is associated with estrogen estrogen is the stimulus here right so that you should keep in mind okay so we are going to need to discuss about mucus polyp now mucus polyp there are two types as i said it can either arise from the uterus which is the most commonest type or it could arise from the cervix okay from the uterus matlab from the endometrial surface or from the cervix it can arise from the endocervical surface and as it's written here the stimulus for the growth of the polyp is estrogen right besides estrogen chronic irritation for cervical polyps as well so coming to the risk factors each is one okay that means as i each the chances of developing a polyp increases diabetes hypertension obesity they also increase the risk of developing a polyp hormone replacement therapy okay tamoxifen what's tamoxifen it's a selective estrogen receptor modulator so most of these risk factors here there is an excess of estrogen now what are the predictors of malignancy how would i know whether it's benign or malignant if it's associated with abnormal uterine bleeding then high chances it is malignant if it happens in postmenopausal women high chances it is malignant if the size is more than 10 millimeter high chances it's malignant why because first things first uh size it's often small right 
polyps. So if it's large, that means it indicates, indicates it's malignant. As I said, it's always associated with estrogen, but then obviously if suddenly you sit in a postmenopausal woman, then I must think, okay, it might be malignant. And why abnormal uterine bleeding means malignant? Because polyps rarely bleed. I'm not saying they don't, but they rarely bleed. Okay. Now talking of about the pathology, it means gross pathology and microscopic. So more importantly, gross pathology here. You would realize re regardless of whether it's a uterine mucus polyp or a cervical mucus polyp, right? The three words is red, small, single, is always there, right? If you realize, okay, the polyp is always red, small, single, okay? Now, the pedicle, if it's long enough, if you look at the picture here, would result in, in protruding out, okay? So, if the uterine polyp, it will protrude out the into the cervix if it's a cervical polyp it will protrude out into the vaginal introitus so most of the time we won't believe it it is asymptomatic and even discovered accidentally okay that means the woman might come for some other reason and then you realize she actually has polyp often the reason that they come for is infertility miscarriage so they come for treatment of infertility treatment of repeated or recurrent miscarriages and on examination normally by hysterosalpingography or uh, hysteroscopic examination then you realize hey, this patient has polyps okay but anyways, women do complain of contact bleeding. They do complain of irregular bleeding. Very often though, they do, do definitely complain of vaginal discharge, which is often excessive and offensive. Right? So on clinical examination, very often, I can. there's no positive finding unless and until it's a huge polyp protruding out into the cervix or out into the vaginal uh, introitus right so per vaginal if I feel it's going to be small soft slippery and on per speculum examination when I look at it it's going to be red attached with a pedicle and it's going to be small okay so if you realize these are the terms you got to repeatedly remember red small right soft okay so as I told you, diagnosis is normally accidentally. You can go for certain invest, such as hysterosalpingography and hysteroscopic examination. Hysterosalpingography, uh, what you will see is a filling defect. All right. Common complication. Yeah, ulceration, not so much, but does happen, but more importantly, recurrence, especially if I do not remove it completely, right? Now, management of uterine polyp and cervical polyps are simple removal, both cases. So, with a uterine polyp, I can go for uterine curate touch, right? I curate out the surface, the endometrial surface of the uterus. And obviously that will scrape out the pedicle and then I remove the polyp using a ring or open forceps okay or hysteroscopic resection and hysterectomy now these are for this case scenario hysterectomy is only if the polyp keeps happening again and again and they already have uh, they already completed okay they are family then you go for hysterectomy otherwise hysteroscopic resection is also good with uh, for endometrial polyps causing infertility postmenopausal bleeding and AUB right and with cervical polyps what you do is you simply twist the pedicle using a ring or ovum forceps and then you cauterize the base of the pedicle to prevent recurrence okay so thank you for watching and if you like, 
the video please do subscribe hit the like button uh, you can follow me on my instagram account meet non toxic i do post sometimes on it and do comment suggesting what improvements i could make